and welcome to my Thor and Oak and Shield cosplay tutorial. I'm Lauren Does Cosplay, and in this video I'll be going over how I made the fabric pieces, 3D printed scales, accessories, and wig for my Thorin cosplay. I'll be splitting this tutorial into two videos, and the second video will go over how I made the belt, boots, and bracers for this costume. I've been a Thorin stand for like 10 years since I saw the midnight premiere of An Unexpected Journey my freshman year of college, so completing this cosplay was really special to me. Without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial! I'm not generally one for sewing based costumes, so this was a huge challenge for me. I started with the Simplicity 1552 pattern, and this was so helpful to get the foundational shapes for all of the fabric pieces. I did end up modifying almost everything just to be a bit more accurate to the on screen costume. The undermost tunic was very straightforward. I hardly made any changes to the pattern for this, so I don't really have any clips of me making that. The next layer is the one that holds all of the hexagonal pieces, so I wanted it to be nice and sturdy. I ended up actually using felt and just double layering every piece to give it strength. Again, just minor pattern changes, and I sewed it all together. The next part was making these beautiful dwarven scales. My partner used Blender to model all of these pieces to be as close to the reference photos as we could get. Uh, we used our AnyCubic Resin 3D printer for everything on this project, and it worked like a dream. We were able to get all of the fine details on everything with no need for like sanding all of these little tiny pieces. As a side note, I know 3D printers are not accessible to everyone, but this is not the only way that you can make these pieces. Um, it's how I did it, but it, you could also make masters out of clay and mold them and cast them with like resin or silicone or whatever, whatever works for you. To get the scale size proportionate to my body, we did end up printing a tester of every piece shape at a different scale. So like started at a base and then printed at 10, 15, 20, 25% um, just so that we could determine how it would best fit on me. And there will be a link in the description to a downloadable file if you would like to print any of the scales or accessories we designed for this project. Since these pieces don't need to be flexible, it was super easy to just hit them with a coat of bright silver spray paint and get the base color down. To knock down some of that brightness, I watered down some black acrylic paint and brushed that onto every piece. I would then kind of quickly wipe the paint off, leaving some remnants in the nooks and crannies of the piece to give it some dimension and a little bit of a worn look. I've got a lot of clips in here showing what the pieces look like before and after the weathering. I think there ended up being like three or four hundred scales on this tunic, uh, so the weathering did take a while, but I love these little pieces so much, I just think they're so pretty. To finish them up, I hit them with a coat of Krylon Kamar Varnish Spray, I love you so much. Once those were done, I was able to start laying them out on the fabric and mapping out how I was going to glue them down. The glue I used was this Loctite Vinyl Fabric and Plastic glue. I'm not sure if it was the best glue to use, but it worked really well. I made sure to coat the like every bit of the back of every piece just because I knew it was going to be on fabric and it would need to move and bend a lot you know, with the fabric and I didn't want any of those edges lifting up. I attached the scales on the sleeves first and then sewed those on and then I moved on to the body of the tunic. I think I started at the, at, like, the bottom trim and then I did everything on the chest. <laughs> So here's what that scale tunic layer looks like when it's done. My favorite piece! The next layer was the blue embossed velvet layer, which I was absolutely dreading. I used one of the pattern pieces from the Simplicity pattern to make this piece and cut out the pieces for the outside, um, a layer for the interfacing, and then another layer for just, you know, sandwich it all in. Now it's time for the embossing. So I got these large rubber blocks from Amazon and I just carved the design into it, uh, kind of like a big stamp. And to emboss the velvet, I put the stamp facing the outside of the fashion fabric. Then working from the inside, I lightly sprayed with water and then rested the hot iron on the fabric until the moisture from the water evaporated. And you want to do this sort of, you know, lifting it up and down and it'll, it, it's pretty fast. Before pulling the fabric up, I used chalk to trace over what I could feel from the stamp. Since this is a really large interconnecting pattern, it was extremely difficult to get it all pattern matched up, and it definitely isn't perfect, um, but having the chalk as a guide helped me to see roughly where to place the stamp for the next section. While this was by far my least favorite part of this whole build, the end result is so beautiful and it really adds a lot of detail and dimension to the coat layer. I didn't show a ton of the sewing process of this piece um, either because I was making it up as I went along, but you know, it turned out pretty good. 
final fabric layer for this costume is Thorne's big fur-lined winter coat. I thrifted this black leather coat from the thrift store and knew it would work for my final project without me having to completely make a coat from scratch. I seam ripped the sleeves off and sewed those little loose ends together. Then practicing on some of my leftover sleeve fabric, I made a mixture of silver acrylic paint and tested a few options to see what would look you know, the most correct to get that sort of gray silver color of Thorne's coat because the black didn't look quite right. Once I painted the whole coat, I moved on to the fur lining and the collar. I used the base from a piece in the simplicity pattern and modified it to be more the right shape. I cut out my faux fur pieces and then just needed to sew them onto the coat. I definitely broke a few needles in this process, but we got it done. There's some scrunching sort of waist definition on Thorne's coat, so I went along the center of the coat line and leather punched a bunch of holes along that. And then I weaved a sturdy thread through and then pulled it to, you know, a tautness that gave me that desired effect, sort of like ruching. Uh, and here's what that looked like when the coat was all done. I'm just gonna briefly touch on how we made the accessories for this costume. Um, it's the exact same process of how we did all of the scales. Uh, so my partner modeled and 3D printed all of these pieces, and then I just did the spray paint, the black acrylic wash, and um, then the top coat. For this we made two of his rings, his little hair bobbles that go on the end of the braids, and of course the key to Erebor. The final piece I worked on in this video is the wig. Um, I started with a really great base from Webster Wigs. This was Ariel in dark brown. Um, it was already the right color and texture, so I just weaved in some gray hairs from another wig I already had. And I did the little braids at the base of the ears, put the bobbles on, and that was it. If you like this video and you're interested in seeing how I made the belt, the boots, and the bracers for this costume, um, I'm going to have a part two to this, and so you can check out how I made those in a little bit more detail, and I will have that linked in the description below. I hope that you find this video useful in some way if you decide to make a Thorin cosplay. Remember that there are a million different ways to make a costume. If some of my methods don't work for you, uh, you know, there's, there's other ways to do it. This is just what I had access to and this is how I made my costume. The next video I'll be working on is an armored Galadriel from the new Rings of Power series, so stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye